We'll also take some time to talk about Helgrind. Helgrind, uh, here pictured Helheim, the uh, underworld uh, of Norse mythology, which is a cold, cold place, um, is, uh, well, intended to detect errors in the use of threads, uh, or more broadly, concurrency problems in general. Um, in this way, this is a very nice tool for improving your performance, even though it doesn't actually directly speed anything up. Given a single-threaded program, if it's split into a multi-threaded program, there is a distinct possibility that we introduce some errors. Anything that we could do that would reduce those errors will, in the end, be beneficial. Humans are just not that good at parallel thinking, we're pretty sequential. Um, and as you'll grow tired of hearing me say, I, I say that a program that is fast and wrong is probably less useful than one that is slower and correct. Uh, and the goal of Helgrind is to determine where, if anywhere, there are concurrency problems. Uh, and there are some concurrency problems that we know are detected by the Rust compiler where it will say, I think there's a potential race condition here on this variable and I'm going to forbid you from uh, compiling this code uh, because something is wrong. This is not okay, unacceptable, uh, please fix, uh, use, use some constructs to deal with that. That's the compile time stuff. Uh, what Helgren does is observe at runtime what your program is doing and see if it finds anything wrong and report it if it does. It obviously uh, can't prove that your program is correct. Uh, proving correctness is actually really hard uh, when it comes to programs. However, um, it can catch some errors uh, that occur commonly. Uh, and Helgrind, uh, again, also being developed for a C and C++ kind of world, uh, really addresses three kinds of errors. Uh, number one is misuses of the uh, pthreads API. Number two is lock ordering problems. Number three is data races. Um, the first category really doesn't require a lot of explanation. It is if uh, Helgrind observes at runtime something like unlocking a mutex that is uh, unlocked or deallocation of memory with a locked mutex in it uh, or a thread that exits while holding on to a lock that is locked, uh, it will report that as an error. Those kinds of things don't happen very commonly in Rust unless you're doing something really bizarre because, well, Rust tries super hard to prevent you from doing this. You know, when a thread leaves the, uh, uh, leaves the running scope and exits, then it deallocates things, but you know, deallocation here, the drop, will also unlock the mutex and that kind of thing, so no problem. Uh, you know, calling unlock on a mutex isn't really explicit anymore. It's the mutex guard goes out of scope, so it's harder to get wrong. However, the second category of error is not prevented by anything really about the Rust language, and it is um, a lock ordering error. Uh, and so in pseudocode, um, we did this example previously in a concurrency course with semaphores, but you could do the same thing with locks of any sort, uh, which is that if uh, thread P acquires uh, a mutex A and then B, and thread Q does it in the opposite order, uh, then there is potentially a deadlock here if each thread acquires one of the two uh, and uh, then they both get stuck waiting for the other one that will uh, continue. This, like I said, isn't stopped at compile time by Rust, uh, and so you know, really, um, you know, can be detected at runtime in that Helgren will report as an error, uh, and it will say the initial order, which, which is whichever one it sees first is correct. So if thread P runs first and says, I saw A, then B, that's correct. Uh, and it will say there's no problem. Uh, and uh, then after that, if it sees B then A, it will say, wait a minute, thread Q is wrong because order was established when thread P acquired them in the order A then B. That thread P ran first may just be coincidence. There's no law that says that one of the orders is correct. It's just Helgren decides whichever one it sees first, that one is correct. Everything else is incorrect. Whichever order you choose, all that matters is consistency. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, in this case, you know, th there's like a super obvious alphabetical order. I said A, then B, and you could say, yeah, alphabetical order, that makes sense, or reverse alphabetical order, that makes sense, too. 
um, but it's not always that easy. Uh, you know, if if these are account structures and each account has a lock associated with it, um, you know, there's you know, the, no obvious rule by the name that gives it away. Uh, and having some ordering of some sort based on account number or something like that would make sense uh, as a way of seeing to it that you are always acquiring them in a consistent order. Uh, yeah, how does this work? Internally, well, Helgren builds uh, a directed graph of lock acquisitions, uh, and every time a lock is acquired, uh, it adds an edge to that graph uh, and checks to see if a cycle exists. Uh, if a cycle exists, that indicates there is a potential for a deadlock, which we do not want. The third category that we've talked about as a race condition, uh, again, the uh, compiler really tries its best to prevent uh, anything from happening that causes a race condition. Um, the way that it looks for that is uh, two threads accessing the same memory location without locks or uh, some other mechanism of coordination. Uh, ultimately, we don't expect to see this in our Rust code. However, uh, again, in a world where you're doing some interop with C code, uh, there is a potential for something going wrong because, well, the Rust compiler can't uh, vouch for what the C code is doing. Um, behind the scenes to check this, uh, the tool is looking at the use of all the uh, standard primitives, lock, unlock, signal, post, wait, that sort of thing. Uh, and anything that implies a potential ordering between events is taken and added again to a directed acyclic graph that represents the dependencies. Uh, and uh, if it observes memory being accessed from more than one thread and there's no path through this graph that indicates an ordering, it is treated as though it is race, keeping in mind that at least one of those accesses has to be a write. You can ask uh, Helgren to try to tell you about variable names if it can with the command line option read var info equals yes, uh, in which case it might say, hey, here's you know, the exact variable where the race occurred as opposed to just a memory location, which is sometimes all you get. Uh, and as we saw earlier with the idea of uh, Valgren telling you where a deallocation goes, Helgren doesn't tell you what fixes the problem. Fixing it is your job. Uh, it just says you will uh, you will need to know here's the race that I observed or here's the lock ordering problem that I observed. Uh, and you have to be the one to decide how to address it. You have to be the one to decide how to fix it. It's your job. Uh, and the tool is just reporting the potential error that it sees uh, and not really offering up solutions. This may be a little bit frustrating in the sense of like a serial complainer who thinks that, you know, if they just moan about what's wrong, uh, you know, they've done their part, and you know, the rest is all up to you, uh, which uh, you know, can be uh, a little grating over time. Let's also take a look at an example of a lock ordering problem that we could have in our code. Uh, so here is a very contrived example, but we have uh, a couple of uh, mutex constructs with uh, zero in them. Uh, and then we have uh, a couple of uh, clones, so we can pass them to two different threads, uh, and we'll do that. Uh, and in thread, uh, well, the first thread, we will uh, lock A and then B, uh, and the other we will lock B and then A, and we'll actually find out what our uh, final values end up with. So let's do it. Let's take it for a spin. Okay. Uh, final values ended up 1 and 1. There is, of course, a possibility we get a deadlock uh, and we don't get any final output at all. Uh, but we'll scroll back through the, uh, through the output. Mm. So one of the things to look for in uh, Valgrind's uh, output from Helgrind is that we get a threat announcement. So thread uh, announcements are a when a uh, thread is created to give you some idea about like what thread it is, where it came from, what it's doing. You get a little announcement, and it says this is thread three, and it was created um, eventually by pthread create, um, but ultimately it happened uh, in our main function on line nineteen, uh, and that is a thread. We can, in fact, see that um, there's no obvious uh, ordering in which threat announcements occur. They happen when they happen and don't necessarily happen in any specific order, uh, which might make it a little hard to track down which thread you're looking for based on the threat announcement, but it will be there. 
We'll also see here is a lock ordering problem and lock order of and then a hex address followed by another hex address is violated. Those are the memory addresses of the locks in question and that's how uh, we're going to keep track of which ones are which. Uh, so that uh, we don't worry about you know, pesky things like names. Uh, and basically, uh, the observed incorrect order was a lock acquisition here on line, you know, here, line 63, blah, 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 on line 20 of our actual code, followed by a later acquisition on line 21. Uh, and the required order was established by a different thread that ran earlier, uh, which where it acquired the lock here on line 14, followed by a later acquisition on line 15, uh, thus successfully demonstrating the problem that we uh, intended to demonstrate. It also tells you about where the lock in question was first observed. That is, uh, when, when did we know it exists? Well, this tells you about where it was created, uh, which can be helpful as well in figuring out what uh, lock is involved in the race because, or in the uh, ordering problem. Because, like, honestly, just knowing this memory address isn't enough to track it down. It doesn't help. Uh, it doesn't tell you anything particularly useful. Uh, we also see... Uh, some uh, thread announcement, uh, and we also see that the uh, main thread also has this lock ordering problem depending on which of the threads runs first. Uh, main locks it, I think, in order A and then B, uh, and we observed B and then A as the first ordering. So in this case it says one of the three is correct and two are wrong. It's not majority rules, it's just whatever we observe first, that's what we think should happen. Uh, and you will need to change it to make it consistent, uh, and then the problem will go away. Doesn't matter whether we change it to be A and then B, or then B uh, followed by A. Either one of those is correct. Whatever gets the job done. Yep, uh, so, yeah, the output is uh, kind of verbose, but hey, whatever uh, helps you track the error down.